number assessment summary for achieved. For achieved you need to know the following. Number one, adding GST. Two, removing GST. Three, remaining fractions. Four, calculating remaining percentages. Five, contribution ratios. Six, interest in bank. And seven, exchange rate. So let's start at the very top of us here. We've got adding GST number one. All you have to do is simply multiply by 1.15. Now there is a rationale behind this in that you're actually, by the distributive law, you're multiplying by 1 and then also by 0.15. That 0.15 is in fact the GST. So you're doing both. You're multiplying it by itself, getting the same amount back, plus multiplying by the 0.15, which is in effect adding the GST because you're multiplying by the 0.15 as well. If you don't fully understand that, um, just remember, multiply by 1.15. That's all you need to do. So you take the value without the GST. You just hit times on the calculator and then 1.15, and out comes the result that includes GST in it. Um, and so there's your question you need to do. All you have to do is you use this value here and multiply it by 1.15. All right, removing GST, number two. Well, this is just the opposite, the reverse of what we did above in number one. Um, in number one, we were assuming that we did not have any GST. We needed to add to GST, and we multiplied by 1.15. Here, for number two, we we have a GST already in there. We're doing the reverse. We're going to divide by 1.15. So what we've done here is um, the cost of food amounts to $655, including GST. What is the cost excluding or after you remove a GST? Well, you've got to write down a label, which is cost of food, including excluding GST. You have to have a label in there, followed by the calculation, which goes in between the equals signs here, followed by the um, result here it comes out and you need to just simply start with whatever you had there um, which included the GST which was uh, 655 divide by 1.15 and then you get your result but you need to set it out like this you've got to have label followed by calculation followed by result and notice that the third decimal place is rounded up and it's only rounded up, uh, sorry, the second decimal place is rounded up. So that was actually a 6 in your result. You would have noticed that if you actually did calculate this yourself, you would have noticed that it's 0.56, da 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 da, something else afterwards. So uh, the third decimal place is 5. If the de third decimal place is in fact 5 or more, you have to round that second decimal place up 1 to make it 7. Alright, so you've got another question. You just follow exactly the same procedure and you should be fine. Divide by 1.15. Next one, calculating remaining fractions. Um, calculate the remaining fraction if you pay a if a relative pays a fraction of the total. E.g. your aunt will pay one third of the cost of your airfare for a trip overseas. The trip costs $3,457. How much of this will you pay? Your portion of the airfare is going to be the remaining fraction. This is the easiest way of doing it. You've got one third um, has been paid for by the aunt. So what is remaining? What's the remaining fraction? Well, the remaining fraction that you need to pay is then two thirds. There are other ways of doing this. You could actually work out how much did the aunt pays and then subtract it from a total. But the easiest way of doing this is to write down what you're calculating. Your portion of the airfare equals and then two thirds. That's the amount. That's a fraction you will pay times that total amount equals again and on your calculator you'll get that result and you need to write it in there to two decimal places. Alright so you've got another question after that and uh, this time the aunt pays two-fifths of the cost of the airfare so you've got to work out well how much is your portion well what is it what is your portion if the aunt plays, pays two-fifths just think about it and multiply that new fraction. Don't use two fifths. It's going to that's how much the aunt's paying. How much are you paying? Um, and then multiply that fraction of what 
fraction that you're paying by this amount here. All right, so um, calculate the remaining percentages. Number four, of a car purchase of a car worth um, if you purchase a car worth five thousand five hundred ninety-nine and your dad pays eighteen percent of this, how much do you pay? Well, once again, just like with the fractions, you've got to work out the remaining percentage. So if your dad pays eighteen percent, what is the remaining percentage? How what percentage do you pay? And of course your dad's percentage and your percentage have to add up to a hundred percent in total. So the remaining percentage is actually eighty-two percent. Now as a decimal, that's 0 0.82. Now you're, if you've got a nice calculator, one of those natural display calculators, you could actually go 5599 5, 9, times 82%. You could actually enter in 82% into your calculator directly. In some cases, if you have a percentage mark, a little percentage symbol, you have to press shift and then find the percentage symbol on your calculator. And if that was a case, it would save you um, having to convert it into a decimal. It is relatively easy to convert into a decimal anyway. 82% becomes 0 0.82. So this is another way of doing it if you don't have a percentage function on a calculator. You write down your portion of the payment for the car is 5,599 times... 0 point and then whatever um, percentage you had which is 82 um, equals and then your final result just be very careful because suppose you had a, a, a percentage value is less than 10 you would have to have another zero in there so just if for instance if it was four percent that would not be 0 0.4 because it's 40 percent okay if it's four percent it would be 0 0.04 um, so you'd go times 0.04 if that was 4%. Right, so um, in this case we're not doing that. I'm just giving you an example. It's, it was 18% um, and so 82% remaining is the amount you need to pay. So times 0.82, that's the correct thing that we need to do in this case here. All right, so um, number five, contribution ratios. Alright, so if a relative pays or contributes a portion of your expenses in a certain ratio, how much do you pay? For every $5 you save, your parents will contribute $2. Yours and their portions will be in a ratio of 5 to 2. If a total cost is 4300 what? how much is your portion of the expenses? Okay, if we draw up a set of boxes, if you have, say, seven boxes, just imagine seven boxes all lined up along here. Now, it says your portion is five, so you, it would be seven boxes, and five of those boxes would be yours, and two of the boxes would be um, your parents, because they contribute two for every five that you contribute. So five out of two, five out of seven, of the boxes are yours. You're going to pay five sevenths, and you don't need to really figure out. Pay five sevenths of the total amount. So your portion is going to be five sevenths. Um, so we've got here five sevenths times the total amount equals the result here. Okay. Um, number six, interest in the bank. If there was $10,000 at an interest rate of 6% per annum for seven years, after seven years at 6% savings, the easiest way of doing this is you just have to have, kind of memorize this here. I could explain the reason why behind it if you like. Um, however, if, well, how about we just look at one year? Ignore the seven there. Okay, so after one year, you're going to be adding 6%. And so just like we did with GST to add 15% um, onto our GST way over here, uh, the very top, um, we multiply by 1.15 to add the GST. So it's adding 15%. Well, to add 6%, we just simply multiply by uh, 1.06. That's adding 6%. 
but then you've got to do it over and over again for seven years. So you, in other words, you take it's compounded. Each at the end of each year, you've got to also multiply the result again by 1.06 again, and then at the end of the next year, you will multiply by 1.06 again, and then again multiply by 1.06, and you keep doing that at the end of each year. Um, taking the total, including all the all the interest that has been accumulated so far, and multiplying the whole thing by 1.06 as many times as you can until um, you've used up those seven years. So this is the same as to the power of seven, if you can understand. So I've explained the reason why. There. Um, if you don't remember that, um, if you don't understand that it, that is, then uh, just try to memorize how to at least do this. Start with the amount times and then one point followed by the percentage now remember you have to put a zero in there if it's less than 10 percent so 06 not 0.6 but 1.06 and um, to the power of the number of years sometimes if it's a, a fraction of a year like 7.5 years you would write down 7.5 instead of, um, of that there all right Exchange rate. Oh, just another thing here. If there's, an, if there's another decimal place, by the way, like a one over here, all we would do is we just add or put that decimal place after the six there. So um, if this is 6.1, for instance, it'll be times 1.061 to the power of seven. All right, exchange rate. Now, what best way to look at it, this here is to see, and I've actually used real um, values here, this is a Russian ruple, and the current exchange rate anyway in 2018, near the end of 2018 online was in fact uh, $1 is equal to 0 0.022 Russian ruple. Um, so what, what we need to immediately look at is to see which one has a lower value. So we can see, well, um, Russian ruple is you get less Russian ruble for a higher value of New Zealand dollars. Okay, and it doesn't necessarily mean that the Russian ruble is, has less less um, value. Actually, um, it's just a lower va it's a lower value there, but it can often mean that it's stronger um, than the New Zealand dollar. Um, certainly, in the case of American dollars, if you can remember, like one New Zealand dollar is equal to about 0.7. US dollars, so you need less US dollars, and that's certainly stronger to get one New Zealand dollar. Um, and um, so, but but we just look at the values. You don't even need to know that. Just look. This is this is less. It's a lower value, and we've got one dollar here. So it should reflect that in our result. So um, if we look at our result here, we see. We've got 4,000 uh, New Zealand dollars and 88 Russian rupa. We'll immediately look at that. Please look and see whether it actually makes sense. We've got a higher value of New Zealand dollars, a lower value of Russian rupa. Well, over here, same thing, higher value and then lower value of Russian rupa. So it must be correct. We must have done the right thing. Uh, we use times to do this. If you end up, in fact, getting it wrong, so you've got it a value of Russian ruble that was more than 4,000 New Zealand dollars. Um, it does not match what we originally had in this little um, thing that we're given, one dollar and then less Russian ruble. So, um, so if that was the case, you would just simply use divide instead of times, as I've written here. So sometimes you use times, sometimes you use divide. All right, um, and of course you either times or divide by this number that's not a one. Times and dividing by one won't make any difference. The other value is the one that you need to either times or divide by. This one here, 0 0.022. Um, so have a look at some one over here for euros. You're obviously going to either times or divide by this value over here. Um, but you check which one actually works and gives you the um, correct amount. Either it should, figure out whether it should be either higher or lower. Um, depending on what's given here. Okay, all right. Um, now that's it.